Saints, Prophetess Don O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner here. Um, what I was going to say, you know, we had a little problem this morning, but you know what? God's in control. The enemy just keeps trying to come at us. Um, please continue to pray for our, Daniel and I and our ministry. You know, our door just came open too. Pray for God to heal Daniel completely so that we can go together because, um, I was invited already to speak in a church, so pray since God is getting ready to move. I really strongly feel that we're on the verge of seeing God open doors. And we're seeing the enemy is coming against not just us, he's coming against the body of Christ. And we're going to have to be strong in these last days. Let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit. And then um, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, but I was going to tell you something else. I just... I'm trying to remember. You know, I just forgot. Let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Then we're going to worship some, okay? Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here to say what you're wanting me to say. I yield myself to you, precious Holy Spirit, and I ask you to speak through me, Lord. Father, I ask you to wash us and cleanse us in your blood, Lord, so that we can do what you're calling us to do. Help us to walk in love, I walk in unity in the body of Christ and in our homes, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Putting up with us, Lord. We're not perfect, Father. The only one that's perfect is you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this day. We ask that your spirit would show up, touching lives, Lord, saving people, Lord, setting them free, delivering them, healing them, Lord. We want to see miracles. This is the time. We believe that, Lord. This is the time that we shall go forth and do miracles in your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let's worship this morning. All to Jesus, I surrender.
changing. Some days are brown. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I need the every hour. We need Jesus, don't we? We need you, Lord, every hour. Love it. We need you, Lord.
glad days on earth I will away The moment that I see you face to face Cause nothing in this world will satisfy But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry the cup, Jesus Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Lord, we need more of you, Jesus. And Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Yes, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, I love this one at the center. I see the center of your life. It's Jesus at the center. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh 
don't you? I love that. These are old hymns we are singing. I love to praise the Lord. I know we praise a lot, but I love to be in God's presence. You know, all right, let's see what we're going to talk for just a minute here about some news. I don't talk a lot about it. I post some here on Facebook. Um, I don't know. We may have room for maybe one more, and then you can like our fan page. If you're not a subscriber on our YouTube page, go ahead and subscribe. To YouTube, as you can tell, my voice is getting better. You know, it's not easy, but I'm trying to eat more healthy. Watch not having dairy or cheese. Basically, you know, there's a lot I've got to cut out and eat more clean. I have a more clean diet, and that because I'm noticing, I'm able to breathe better. So, um, thank you, and keep praying if you are praying, saints. I appreciate. It. I need my voice for speaking. You know, and the enemy likes to cut it off, so I can't speak. You know, and um. Daniel and I fast meal here and there still, you know, because God wants us to. We're going to talk about that in a minute. i got something mighty to talk about. We're to keep contending, saints, because I'm telling you right now, we are almost near what God's about to do. God's got great things for you and for me, and we've got to keep going. We've got to keep pressing, and the devil wants to stop you and I, and we can't let him stop us. We've got to keep persevering. So continue to pray for us. You know, Daniel and I fast and pray a meal here and there, and we are uh, listening to worship music and, and getting more into the Lord, because I believe, saints, we have to be. 
We have to be strong warriors in these days ahead. Because God wants a strong army. He wants you and I to be strong in these last days. Let's just get some news here real quick. I want to share with you. Just the other day, I spoke to you. You know, I haven't had a lot of sleep. Last night, I woke up like three and four times. I didn't sleep very good. The night before, I was up, I think, from 12.45 all the way on. Because then my girlfriend wanted to do the errands that day. So we had to run and do errands. So I was up all day. I didn't even get to rest. And then the night before, I was up at three. So my, my schedule changes. I'm never, you know, I'm up one minute and down one minute. You know, so pray for me. Pray that, you know, that I'll rest, you know, because i got to be careful that I don't do more than what God has called me to do for in the future, you know, because the enemy likes to wear you and I out, and we have to stay strong in the Lord and prayed up. And so the other morning, if you remember, I gave this powerful word, you know, a war is about to start, which I believe it is. You know, that was a confirmation because the Lord had me look at, um, remember I gave you that word from, Prophet Sadhu Sundar, and he spoke about that 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 there was going to be a war with in Israel before the end of 2017. Well, we're almost at the end of this year. If you haven't heard those messages, go on our YouTube page and you can listen to the word I uh, prophetic word I shared with um that said Sadur, I can't pronounce his name. Prophet Sadhu Sundar Sal Ray from founder of Jesus Ministry. I think he's Indian. And um, he speaks some powerful words. He was, um, he delight, he gave accurate prophetic words, including the election of Donald Trump in 2016, the U.S. presidential election. You know, they've been coming at him, too. So we need to keep our president in prayer. You know, God's got a reason, purpose. We've got that new world order wanting to take over. And we've got to pray, saints. We have to be bold. We have to be strong and stand and keep standing. Well, you know, here, this news, I shared it the other day. Trump now has until Monday to decide on moving the embassy to Jerusalem, okay? Now, it says here that while the former deadline for the president to sign the waiver delaying the move another six months is actually December 1st, okay? They, they've extended it three days, which December 1st was yesterday, okay? Washington, as Israelite, Israelites and Palestinians watch the hours tick by on Friday, Waiting to see whether U.S. President Donald Trump would once again sign a waiver delaying a move of the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, a State Department official clarified that Trump actually has until Monday to make up his mind. The formal deadline for the waiver is December 1st, but since that date fell on Friday this year, the deadline was extended to December 4th after the weekend, which is on Monday. This was confirmed by the Times of Israel. So we have to wait and see. Now, is he going to do that? I don't know. I believe a war is coming, though, because let me just share this one part that, that Prophet Sudoris Okay, Let me see if I can find it. Okay, he said on April 3rd, 2014, the angel Michael brought Sundar a message about the future of Israel. He was shown numbers represent a significant year in the history of modern Israel, including 1948, which we know it was in May that... They became a nation. I forget what day, but it was in May. But 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 uh, let me finish reading this. Okay, including 19 more, which was the year the nation was reborn. Let me grab a drink because my throat. I don't know why it's getting dry. Okay, was reborn in 1967, the year they fought and won the Six Day War, which was the first time they had regained control of Jerusalem in nearly 2,000 years. Written below those two numbers, Sundar saw the year 2017 written there. Then the angel Michael said, another major war is planned. A major change and shift in government and land is coming. Okay, on March 11, 2015. Now, these were a few years ago that he was given these prophetic words. While he was waiting on God, he had a heavenly experience. He saw himself in heaven standing for the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw two saints standing together with the Lord Jesus. One was Moses and the other was Jeremiah. After speaking to him about some matters, the Lord Jesus turned to the prophet Jeremiah and said, teach him about the 70 years. Then the prophet Jeremiah approached Sundar and said, 70 years in the history of Israel is very, very significant. There is going to come a turning point in the history of Israel in the year 2017. That will be the 70th year in the history of Israel since its formation. 
Sundar was dumbfounded, but what he heard, what he had heard, he calculated the numbers and concluded the seventh year since the formation of Israel would be 2018, because he was going by the maze when they become a nation, okay? Not 2017. So he asked Jeremiah about this. Jeremiah replied, no, you are wrong. The count should be from the time when the covenant was first signed. Okay, so Sundar did some research and discovered on November 20th, 1947, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution recommending the adoption and implementation of what they called the Partition Plan for Palestine. Now, the Holy Spirit then showed me, because I gave this word the following morning, but he showed me the night before was November 29, 2017. And that's been 70 years. And he just gave me about a war is about to restart. So I know that was a confirmation saying that we are about to see something. Now, is President Donald Trump going to move the United States Embassy over there to to Jerusalem? You know, we have to wait and find out, but I do know we're getting near something. Something huge is about to take place. We need to keep praying. Go and listen to all that I talked about. Go and look up those links because I gave the link to this. He talked about um, three things that would happen in 2017. I'm not going to go over all that right now, but you can go take a look at it. It's on our um, YouTube. If you're not a friend on there, you need to go and subscribe. Go and listen to also, you know, on 11, 14, 17, I give a warning, California dream by a Hollywood movie, if you remember that. It was like a short dream, but it was like, the Holy Spirit gave that to me. Uh, I'm not going to explain it all right now, but you can go listen to it. It's powerful, because in the scene turn, I was in this warehouse, and this lady pointed out my name, and she told me, be careful what you say. There are robots watching you. And the Lord showed me that, that, this is the new world order. We're about to see this. You know, I didn't know that there was a Sophia robot already being made over there in Saudi Arabia. I was like, wow. And it's kind of creepy. If you haven't heard it, go listen. I put a, a video up there here on Facebook. But it was creepy just listening to it. And go and take a listen to that. I'm not going to go over all this, but you can take a look at these videos over on our YouTube page. Now, I want to read you on... Um, Prophet Russ's word, and then we're, go well, let before we get to that, let's look at these earthquakes real quick. I like to keep an eye on these earthquakes. You know, I've given you that the link so you can go take a look at it from um, the Global Incident Map in Dutch Sense. Now, let's take a look at what's going on here. We've got some big ones here over there in New Zealand at 5.0. That was 34 minutes ago. 2.2 .2 in Hawaii 40 minutes ago. 5.1 in Congo. Alaska at a 3.4. And Papua Guinea, 44.8. Um, and then there was a 5.1 in Australia re regions 89 minutes ago. A 4.8 in wherever, Sa Salbard and Jan May Mayan. I'm not sure where that's at. It might be over in the island somewhere. California is still getting these small swarms. Alaska had a 2.72 hours ago. Um, a 4.7 in Russia, that was three hours ago. 2.6 in Oklahoma four hours ago. Um, we're seeing a small swarms that still going on in California. Um, Aguanga, California having small swarms. Pahala, Hawaii, 1.9 five hours ago, 1.8 five hours ago in Hawaii. The British Columbia had a 2.4 five hours ago, 2.8 in Alaska. A volcano in Alaska erupted. A uh, 2.8 six hours ago, 4.1 Indonesia, Turkey had a 4.4 six hours ago, 5.1 in Iran seven hours ago, uh, 4.2 in Chile that was eight hours ago, 4.4 um, I'm not sure it just says earthquake. I'm not sure where that's at. Pakistan 4.4 nine hours ago, and um, small swarm still in Nevada, California 3.4 11 hours ago. Small swarms going on in California still at Guanganga, in Guanga, I cannot pronounce it, California. 2.4 in South Carolina, that was 12 hours ago. Um, British Columbia, 1.9, 13 hours ago. Alaska, 3.0, 14 hours ago. And it's still going on, these small swarms. You can take a look at that when you have your 
we have time. I keep up on it. I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to keep up on that because I do believe something's coming. Though it's not here yet, saints. And you're seeing me come and getting better, but all it takes, boom. We're going to see something is going to take place. I want to share this prophetic word with you from Prophet Russ today. Oh, gosh, it was awesome. You know, I put up Marsh Burns, Prophet Russ's word, and Prophet Russ's word for today. It's over on our YouTube page. So if you're not a subscriber, go over there and subscribe because I don't place all the, the videos here on the Facebook. But I want to read you this word from Prophet Russ, and then we're going to play a song. I wish I was standing up and preaching because I'm ready to dance. You're going to be ready to dance too in a minute. Let me read this to you. The Father says today, step into your appointed time. Hallelujah. This is zero hour for you. No more waiting and wondering. No more having to endure the enemy's lies as he has said, God hath said. You have clung to my promises and put your expectation on my promise and you will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. That's right. If you've been trusting in God, you are not going to be disappointed. You will not be denied, praise the Lord. This is the sounding of a trumpet to you this day. A clarion sound of deliverance, hallelujah, and culmination. Rejoice, says God. Cast off the grave clothes, praise the Lord, of sorrow and frustration. I know me, I get frustrated times, but you know what? Deliverance is coming. We need to praise God, whether no matter what we're going through. And that's for me too. You know, we're going to have those times where things aren't going our way, so we have to praise the Lord. Put on your dancing shoes and rejoice. That's right. Put your dancing shoes on. I'm ready to dance. Dance in advance, says the Father. He says this. I love this. Dance on the head of the enemy. Praise the Lord. That's right. Dance on the head of the enemy. Let the serpent's head be crushed by the confident step of one who knows I'm with them. Praise the Lord. Step on the enemy's head. That's right. He don't have control over you. You have control over him. Step on his head. All right. Then he says, I'm with you and I'm in you, willing to do and to, to accomplish my good pleasure. Let that heart, the heart of David, bring you now into waiting fields of ripe harvest. You will gather the fruits of my promise by handfuls and armfuls, for this is the jubilee moment and you and I will be magnified. Praise the Lord. All right, I got to play this song because I thought of it today. It's by Karen Wheaton. Let's play it. We're going to worship God. You ready to dance? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Get ready. Praise him. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Look what the Lord has done. I'm not the one who entered in. When Peter and John came upon him, the amen was expected from them. Peter said, Silver and gold, have I none but such as I have? I give to thee. That when the Spirit touched the layman and he came to his feet. Okay. 
Yes, 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 you know, this dancing and this shout, but praise God. And if we be quiet, what's going to happen? The rocks are going to cry. No, I ain't shutting up. I'm going to get louder. You know, my dad nicknamed me Sparky because when I get fired up in the Lord, I'm not going to sit in a pew and be quiet. No, I'm going to praise the Lord. We have got to praise Jesus, saying, in these last days. All right. Before we get started, let's say, I've got words I want to, but i got to tell you something. Now, I know people will judge me, but you know what? That doesn't matter. God knows my heart, all right? So I'm just going to mention this to you. This is just the beginning. I'm going to read this to you, all right? The book finally came out. That's the book. <laughs> all right, I'm in this book. All right? Praise the Lord. God is awesome. Can you see it? Praise God. I don't know. There's like 15, 20 pages. That's the first book. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. It's out. Let me read this to you. It's out on Amazon. This is the first book of many books that I will have coming out. Jesus gets all the praise, honor, and glory. That's right. I give it to Jesus. It's not about me. I'm in a fitness book, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to be in all types of books. You know what? Giving Jesus the praise, honor, and glory. You can purchase the book through our ministry. All your donations go to help us continue sharing the gospel with others. Praise the Lord. My my friend, which is the one you just saw, is Jennifer Nicole Lee. She's a mother and she is 40 years young. And she is Italian. She's bold. She's, she's born again, just like I am. And, you know, and she's on fire. And I, and I love that about her. All right. She wrote this book of inspiration, helping thousands of women get in shape. Now, I don't, I don't look like her. I want her abs like her. I don't look like her, okay? But that's not important, you know, because what does it say? The, that fitness profits little. You know, this is my calling. I'm not called to do that, okay? I, I exercise and work out. I used to work out too much, but you know what? Then God had to put it in its proper place. Now, I'm not going at all. Daniel and I, we walk. Because right now, I feel it's not the time for me to be in the gym. So, Daniel and I walk. In time, if God was well, I may exercise a few days a week. But no, that's not my main focus. My main focus is doing what God has called me to do. Because he's getting ready to raise up our ministry. And Jesus gets the glory. So she wrote this book. If you know, if you'd like to get this book, I'm going to just um, say this to you. I will personally, this is the first book that's come out. Okay? I'm going to have my own personal books. And Jesus gets the glory. This the first book, I'm, I'm sharing my testimony in it. If you'd like to get a copy of it, I have to order them. It's $25 with free shipping. There's no shipping. I will sign the book. You're helping our ministry. You're helping us to continue to share the gospel. 
Now, if you want to give a gift of $50, I will auto grab them and send them out free. And I'll give you three books. For your gift of $100, I will send you out five autograph books in free shipping. And I can't give the books out to everyone. I wish I could, but I can't because they're going to cost us money to purchase them. We'll need your name and address, okay? You can um, you can send an email to the heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. Heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. All right? That's where you need to send it. You need to put on there. This is... Um, if you want to pre-order a copy of the book, you can pay for it in the mail with cash. You can send it in the mail, or you can send it through PayPal. But you have to write on there that this book is for Prophet Star O'Brien's testimony book. That way I know, okay? I'll know that's what it's for. Now, if you're just giving a gift, then I'll know. You know, if um, I can't go back and look through gifts that you've given in the past. I can't do that. But if you want to purchase this book now, if you'll specify this is for... Prophet Stone's testimony book, then I'll know, say something about the book, and then I'll know. Or if you'd like to give a gift, you can send a gift to, um, here's the address too, so if you want to send it for the book, you can send it to Don's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Altamont Springs, Florida 32716, or you can give a gift online at www.donsheartfeltcorner.org, and um, that's where the GoFundMe account, you can order the book you can give a gift there now if you have a large gift you'd like to give us we are a 501 tax deductible you can write off it's almost the end of the year all right don't give your money to the government or someone else give your minute money to the ministries that are doing a work for you all right pray and ask the Holy Spirit now I'm not telling you to give out your money to us I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit it's not about Daniel and I okay I'm gonna tell you right now it's about Jesus and what he's doing now if you'd like to give a gift to Daniel and I you're welcome to. We don't get paid for doing this. I also have a birthday coming up. I mean, I'm not doing it for money. God knows why. My birthday is coming out of one another. Birth December 22nd. I'm going to be 46. Ugh. I don't want another birthday. But that that's when my birthday is. But anyways, if you'd like to send a gift, or if you would like to send a letter, you know, maybe a word of prayer you want us to pray for you, or if you have a word of encouragement, I love your encouraging letters. It really touches my heart. It encourages me to help me do these videos. You can send, don't, don't forget to heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. You can put it on Facebook. You can put it on our YouTube page. Don't put it anywhere else. I probably won't see it. And if I don't write you back, please know that I'm very busy. It's just me right now. Daniel is helping me take care of our roommate. He's doing things in the backside. And, and Tom will both be out there. And he's going to be speaking with me. Pray, saints, because I just got a door open. Hallelujah. Pray that God's going to heal Daniel completely and that we're going to be able to go together as a couple. I believe God is on the verge. I told you, he's getting ready to raise up our ministry and do some great things. And the Holy Spirit gets the glory. God's awesome. And he'll do them for you, too. He's not a respecter of persons. You know, he's looking at our heart to make sure we're doing what he's asked us to do. And remember, I told you, it's like a doctor's office. When your name is called, it's time for you to go. God's got a timing for each of us. All right, now I'm going to um, share, I've got a, just a regular word I'm going to share with you. I haven't done a whole lot of teachings on it. I've been saving them for the one I speak. But I'm going to do a little bit of this teaching on here. All right, but I want to share this with her with you because I really like it. I've got a few words that the Holy Spirit was wanting me to share this morning or this afternoon. I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> I keep losing track of the time. Let me see. I've got so much paper at work here. I want to make sure I share with you what I planned on sharing. I have a word that I want to share with you from Elijah Liz. But Let me find the other ones too. Hmm. Bear with me just a minute, saints. It's like every time I, I'm wanting to share something with you, it just disappears. I don't know how it does, but it disappears. Um, bear with me just a minute longer. I have all this paper with them. All right, wait. I want that. I have no idea where I went. Hmm. 
You can say, all right. Well, I had something I wanted to share. Let me see. May have to pull it up. May have to just let me pull it up on the internet. All right. Hold on one minute. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Saints. Um, I don't know what happened to it. But we're not going to let that stop us. You know, the enemy wants to stop us. But, you know, these words that the Holy Spirit is giving me, I know it will encourage you. And the, the enemy doesn't want you to be encouraged. And, you know, so I'm just going to read it to you off of here. Hold on one minute. It was something from, um, here we go. I wanted to share this with you, you know, because the Lord is showing me you and I are having to wait. We're waiting. And, you know, and, you know, I've, I've been, so I know if I'm asking God about waiting, I know you are too. You're asking the Lord. You know, and he gave me a word today of this one. I'm going to share this with you. Um, content until the breakthrough comes. This was off of Elijah List. Karen Harden. And I'm going to read the whole thing because I really like it. It says, everywhere I go, there's a confirmation for the word that has been released in this season of blessing and double. My husband, have, my husband and I have seen confirmation after confirmation. And yet, this breakthrough year has not been easy. Anyone else out there feel that way? I know I have, and I know you are too. There are those I'm talking to that feel like, you know, where is this breakthrough? You know, you keep hearing it's coming, but you're like, God, where is it? I've said that to God several times. All right, she says, I know I'm not the only one. I believe that it's because there is a second part to that word of breakthrough, which is content. And that is so true because the Holy Spirit was showing me Daniel, I needed to be praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. You know, so we, we may not fast every meal, but we're praying, we're, we're fasting meals here and there throughout the day. We're continuing doing what God's asking us to do, and we're waiting on the Lord. And I believe that this word was a word in due season, and it's going to encourage you. She says it's a time to contend. I was talking to my friend, Kim Potter, recently. She had texted me several times letting me know she had felt prompt to pray for me. There was a reason. In the last couple of months, some incredible doors have opened even as I've faced some incredible battles. Recently, I was able to speak before the United Nations. I also just received an invitation to the National Prayer Breakfast. Doors within the area of government have opened this year, and I've been amazed. But even as I've seen breakthrough in one area, as the owner of a small business, I've taken hit after hit. An unexpected repair, a cluster of unexpected bills, multiple clients who were ready to sign a contract and suddenly they had to delay the project. Every client who was on a monthly retainer stopped due to their own challenges, every single one. Just when it seemed breakthrough was on the horizon, it delayed, she said. So in the midst of incredible new open doors, this giant of lack kept getting taller all the time. What is your giant that mocks you? He is about to be felled. She says, even after this hard year of struggle, every single day I get up with the expectation that this will be the day of breakthrough. You know, I say that all the time. You know, I wake up and I'm believing that today is going to be the day. And, you know, even earlier today, I was expecting. You know, I showed you that picture here on Facebook of that little girl where she's so excited about Christmas. You know, I, Daniel and I feel like that where we're just expecting God to move any time now. She goes on to say, I'm not letting go. When we refuse to let go, we will see breakthrough for, for, for he is the God of breakthrough. And I believe that. We've got to hold on. We can't let go. She says here, as Kim and I compare notes, we recognize that while we had both experienced some tremendous breakthrough this year, there were other areas in which we had not yet seen anything at all. Not an ounce. If this is a year of double blessing, and it is, then why are we... All not walking in it yet, she says. I think we are to contend for it, Kim stated as we talked. It wasn't just a comment, it was an anointed word. We both sense it is a word for us all. Blessing and breakthrough are absolutely what is available in this season. But we can be in the midst of blessing and watch as it passes us by. Why, she says? Because we must contend for the promise. 
See, we can't give up. If that hasn't come yet, we can't just lay down and quit. No, we got to keep contending. Some blessings just drop in our laps with others. And usually the big ones, she says, require that we contend for them. The Israelites were given the promised land, but they had to take the promised land. They had to contend for it. Caleb understood that principle. He understood that the promised land was his inheritance. It was given him, but yet he still had to take it. Joshua 14, 12 through 13 says, So now give me this hill country that the Lord spoke about on that day. That day you heard that the Amalekites lived there in large fortified cities. Perhaps the Lord will be with me, and I will drive them out as the Lord said. Break them and double portion our inheritances. The word break them and double portion is our inheritance. It's ours, and yet it will not be without a fight. That's right. It will be won first by prayer and then by action. And the Holy Spirit has given Daniel and I this, a wrestling with God. And I'm going to share this with you. Because that's what it is. We're wrestling with the Lord. Alright? It goes on to say, As I consider the past, every single major miracle I've experienced in my life has come through contending. There are some promises and blessings that come in our lives that come easily. But there are others that will only manifest when we stand and say, I'm not leaving here until you bless me. And I've said that to God. I remember when we were in that apartment. I said, God, I'm not leaving until you bless us. You know, God did. As we left that apartment, God blessed us. Now, we didn't know we were going to be on the street. We didn't know we were going to go, go, go here now, which we've been here for over a year in this other apartment. And God has blessed us. And we're still waiting. But He is about to move. The Holy Spirit showed me. And that's why we're contending. And maybe you're contending. That's because your blessing is getting ready to come forward. All right? She goes on to say, Do you understand that principle? Jacob did. He fought with the angel and refused to let go until he received a blessing and breakthrough. How could Jacob be so bold? Because he needed a miracle and he wasn't going to settle for less. Amen. We need a miracle. We know that right now. Daniel and I cannot move without God. Doing the miracle for us. We need God to do a miracle. And we're waiting. And he's told me he's going to do it. So we're like, Lord, where is this miracle? So we're waiting. We're contending. And I'm not letting go until that miracle comes. And you can't let go of it either. All right? Then she goes on to say, that same night, well, this, this is a scripture right here, I think. That same night he rose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons across over the fort of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream along with all that he had. Jacob was left alone, and man wrestled with him there until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the socket of his thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated. As he wrestled with him, then he said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hallelujah. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, praise the Lord. For you have fought with God and with men and have prevailed. Then he blessed him there. That's Genesis 32, 22 through 31. Then he blessed him there. Jacob contended for a miracle because he was desperate. As he contended for that blessing, he gained something more. It changed him and strengthened him. In that account, the Lord changed his name to Israel. Which means to contend and to prevail. Do you need a blessing today? Have you been standing, waiting, and watching as others have received their blessing? Have you asked, Lord, where is mine? I know I've said, Lord, where is it? Lord, you keep telling me it's coming. Where is it? All right. She goes on. Have you attended meetings where everyone else seemed to receive a word, and yet you left seemingly empty-handed? Where others receive promotion, and you felt invisible? Where it seems your prayers to heaven have hit a lead ceiling? Don't stop. Content, she says. Times are changing. This season, we must understand how to contend for what he has promised. Because there is coming a season in which provision will still be there. But not in the way that we have been used to. 
That regular paycheck may disappear like my retainer clients who paid a monthly basis disappeared. And suddenly my ability to pay bills had to shift. As I asked the Lord about this strange season, I sensed that this wasn't just a challenge I faced. It was a message of things to come. Things are shifting. We have to learn the walk of trusting Him for provision as never before. And you know, and I just want to say, you know, I, and I've said this before, you know, Daniel and I could not get our own apartment at the time. That we had to have two signatures. When I was kicked out of our apartment, I was staying with my girlfriend. We needed two signatures, and we stayed there for like five months. And God kept saying, let me handle it. Well, you know, when God says, let you handle it, you're like, oh, Lord, let you handle it. You get nervous, you know, because you've got to put it in his hands, and you've got to take your hands off the situation. But when we did, and we allowed God to handle that's when my girlfriend, because God said, let, let my girlfriend take care of it. So that's when she had a friend from church that we moved in, we've been taken care of, that is, a, uh, she had a stroke, she's a diabetic, she wears a colonoscopy bag. Now we've had some situations come up, but you want to know some God's taking care of Daniel on. God is taking care of us. The rent is paid. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have more money than we know what to do with. God has been awesome. He's taking care of our needs. No, we're not rich, okay? But we have enough to meet our needs. God is pay pays all the bills, okay? Then on top of that, you know, uh, there are some other things God has done while we're here. You know, God works in mysterious ways. Let me tell you that. God knows what he's doing. He's got a w way of providing for you and for me in ways that we don't even know of. If we will let God have control. You know, what happens is we're so busy trying to control the situation ourselves. Instead of letting God do it. I mean, when we let God do it, He just, whew, He opens up the doors and does amazing things. He provides for us in ways that you and I could have never done or ever thought of. God, it's awesome. We serve an awesome God. And one day, we're going to talk about that. All right, let me go back to reading this. Learning and trust Him for provision as never before. That is not a fearful word. It's a word for knowledge. Let me tell you that even in the wilderness, there was complete provision. It's a place of growth and a place to learn learn to trust and contend. See, God wants us to trust Him. He promised to take care of it. He took care of the birds of the air. Remember that? We read in Matthew. What more important are you and I? He's going to take care of us. We don't need to worry. We don't need to stock up and put it in this little pile. You know, he God will take care of us, okay? He told the Israelites, go get your food for the day. And when they saved up, what happened? It spoiled. So if we'll let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, God will take care of us. I've never known God not to take care of Daniel. If we stay in God's will, that's where it's at, saints. We've got to stay in God's will. If we walk out of His will, God will not take care of you and I. I'm going to tell you right now. We're being disobedient and we're not in His will. When we stay in God's will, God promised to take care of us. It's when we'll walk away and try to do it ourselves. She goes on to say, what does that mean? In the Greek, contend means to engage in a contest or strive for the mastery. Taking hold of the promises of God is a battle where Satan will do everything in his power to keep your inheritance. God's promise for you, from you has your inheritance the later been stolen. Contend for it. Don't give up. Contend for it. Where is there an error of lack in your life? It's not what he has promised you. Contend for the promised land. It is yours, but you have to take it even after this hard year of struggle. Every single day I get up with the expectation this will be a day of breakthrough. You've got to believe. You've got to stand on God's word. You've got to speak his word. You've got to be positive. Don't listen to the lies of them because he'll speak in your ear. He'll lie to you even after God has told you. Showing you over and over. He'll lie to you. He'll whisper lies in your ear. Don't listen to him. Shut it off. He'll even use people, family members. He'll use friends, relatives. Don't listen to them. If God has given you a vision, remember Habakkuk 2, 3. Where is it? We're going to read it. The just live by faith. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make a plain on top of it. And he may run and read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. I'm going to tell you right now. 
that I know there are some people that have a baby that's about to be born. I'm right there, message. You got a baby that's getting ready to be born. Praise the Lord in the spirit. We're not talking about an earthly baby. I'm talking about a spiritual baby. Your baby is about to be born. Praise the Lord. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, hallelujah, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. That's right. You wait for it. You contend for it. You don't give up. Because it will surely come and it will not tarry. We cannot give up. we got to contend. we got to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. And we're all going to have to fight. I'm going to tell you right now, before the return of Christ, we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Not looking to the right or left, but straight ahead. And, you know, we're going to make it. I'm going to tell you, you're going to make it. Because Jesus is in you. Apart from Christ, we can't do nothing. But if Christ is our head, if we abide in the Lord, we are the branches. He is, a, what is it? The vine. If we abide in the vine, the branches, then God will be there. He'll help us. But apart from Him, we can't do anything. You can't do anything. You might think you can do it. You can't do it. Maybe you're listening and you don't know Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be able to do it. Times are changing and times ahead are going to be very, very, very hard. All right? You need to know the Lord because God doesn't have to help you or help me. But He will help us children. He promised to. He'll never leave us or forsake us. I've been times where I've been out on the corner preaching. I've had people just stop me and hand me water. You need to drink this. Well, I'll tell you right now, God doesn't have to do that for someone that doesn't know the Lord. I know Jesus. I'm doing His will. And so God is going to take care of me. And God will take care of you. If you're walking His way, you're doing what God has asked you to do. God's going to take care of you. But if you don't know Christ, no. I'm going to tell you right now, He's not going to take care of you. You're going to have a very hard time. If you're fighting against the Lord, you're disobeying the Lord. Maybe you know the Lord, but you've walked away. It's time for you to come back. It's time for you to say, Jesus, I want to return. Prodigal son and daughter, just return to the Lord. Just say, God, forgive me. I've messed up. I want to return. I want to do your will. Forgive me. Put me back on track. I ask in Jesus' name. Just pray that. God hears you. If you don't know Christ, call him today. Say, Jesus. I need you. Save me. I want to be born again. Come to my heart. I want to know you as my Savior and Lord. I receive you now, Jesus. Amen. Just pray that. God hears you. No, we're not going to have to pray a specific prayer. You know, God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You no, know, I get up here. I'm not all dressed up, decked up in a suit. You know what? That's not what's important. Let's take our makeup off. Let's be who God created us to be. Yeah, I got a little lipstick on. You know, I, there's been times I, I, once in a while, I'll dress up and when I go out. I'm going to dress up in the future, I believe. I pray I get to. If not, then hey, I'll come like this. You know, I'm not into that, though. God doesn't want you into that. I'll tell you right. He wants us into Jesus. Jesus all you and I are ha going to have. I'm going to tell you right now. You're not going to have your material wealth. You hear what I'm saying? It's going to go. Everything's going to go on the wayside. All you and I are going to have is Jesus. And Jesus is all you and I really need. We don't need this other stuff. Those other things are just stuff things. And you know what? Like the junk in the back, that's what it is. Junk. Sitting there, I don't need it. You know, and we've got things, all of us do, things packed up or in other rooms that we don't even use. If you don't use it, give it to somebody else. Let them use it. I believe it's going to be like Acts where we're going to have to help with it. We're going to have to share. Not be greedy and think of me, 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 me. No, we're going to have to give it out. Lord, help us be givers, Lord. And that goes for me. Help us all to be givers in these last days. That's what God wants. All right. So let me go back and read a little bit more. She says, she was talking about the meaning of contend. What does that mean? In the Greek, contend means to engage in a contest or strive for the mastery. Taking all the promises of God is a battle where Satan will do everything in his power to keep your inheritance. God promises for you from you has your inheritance to later been stolen. Contend for it. Where is an era of lacking your life? It's not what he's promised you. Contend for the promised land. It's yours. But you have to take it. Even after this hard year of struggle, every single day I get up with the expectation that this will be a day of breakthrough. I'm not letting go. That's why I don't let go when he refuses. When we refuse to let go, we will see breakthroughs. See, we cannot refuse. You cannot refuse. 
You've got to keep going. Keep your eyes set on the goal. When we refuse to let go, we'll see breakthrough for he is the God of breakthrough. Praise the Lord. It's kind of lengthy here. I've got it up there. Um, impartation to Victor. I'll read this here. For those who are in the land of waiting, it will not be forever. She says, tomorrow may be that tipping point. Don't quit contending. Not long after Kim and I hung up the phone, after months of contending, my situation hit tipping point. Before the day was over, one of my retainer clients called to be reinstated and the upcoming ministry trip was completed. It was completely funded from an unexpected source and a client sent me a new project out of the boom. Everything can change in a day and God has told me that before it's going to change like that. It's going to, excuse me, it's going to happen suddenly. Don't give up, she says. Does that mean the battle's over? Hardly. No, the battle's not over. All right. What we must recognize is as long as we are on this earth, the battle will be not be over. And that's right. We're in these bodies of ours. The battle's not going to be over. We're going to go from one glory to glory. We're going to go from this season to another season. We must contend for his promises in our lives, for our families, for our nation, she said. And then I'm going to let you read it because I, I put it up. She talks about five important steps you need to do. And I put the link up there so that you can read it. But she says one thing down here. I'm going to read to you. When we start to see breakthrough, don't stop contending. It may have started to rain, but don't settle for just a trickle. Pray for the overflow he has promised. You know, God has started working in Daniel our life, but that doesn't mean we're supposed to stop. No, we got to keep contending, and that's what the Holy Spirit was showing me. we got to keep praying, fasting, seeking the Lord, because we're in battle right now, and so are you. We've got to keep going until breakthrough comes. All right. She says down here, we are in interesting times. We've never seen anything like it. We're going to see amazing miracles and provision. But at the same time, we will be in some of the most severe battles we have ever encountered. They will be simultaneous. It is vital that now we learn how to contend for the provision for the days ahead. That's good. You know, I, I truly believe that God is teaching us to learn things now and he's told me this before so that we'll be able to handle things that we're going to be faced with in the future. If you are discouraged and weary today because you too have a hard year and have a giant mocking you, I say to you today and I release the battle cry victory you, contend. The battle is yours if you will contend until it comes. Praise the Lord. That was what God wanted me to read to you. I know he has something else. I don't know what I did with it. Um, I have no idea. It'll probably show up afterward. But I'm going to share a little bit of this word here. Let me see if I see it. It's not here. I don't, I don't know where it went. I had it all together. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I don't know where it went. It's gone. I've got so many papers. It'll probably show up later. You know... Maybe I should read this poem again. The anointing of God is contagious. I've talked to you about that. We're getting ready to see God's anointing. Are you ready? I know I'm ready. All right, now let's get, let me um, share this word briefly with you. I'm not sure how long we've been on it. It's getting hot in this room. You know, a lot of times you see me with these tank tops on. It's hot in here, Saint. I live here in Florida, but it's still warm. <laughs> it's still warm here, okay? I'm going to talk to you for just a minute. I'm not going to read all of this. I mean, I've got a lot here to talk to you about. I probably won't read all of it. But I'm calling this, and it's a word. Here in America, we will see a revival. I'm telling you, saints, it's coming. We're about to see a revival. And I looked up the word revival, and this is what, what I got. An improvement in the condition or strength of something. Come back. Restoration. Resurrection, reawakening of religious fervor and restoration of life. Restoration to life. How does a revival begin? This is what I wrote. A revival begins in the heart of God's people. 
when you and me cry out to God, pray for a change in the people's hearts, cities, and nations. And we need to pray for a revival. We need to be that revival. We need to see a change in our lives. As we change and we be what God wants us to be, others are going to be touched. They're, it's going to ooze out of us, and they're going to sense anointing. We're supposed to be the light. Light on a hill hidden is not hidden. All right? So we've got to be that light in this world. It's time for God's people to cry out to God like never before. We need a revival in America. We need a change in our nation. Remember, I love the scripture. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people, that's you and I, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We have to be willing to humble ourselves, get on our knees and cry out to God. We have to be willing to do that. We have to be willing to seek God in these last days. All right. Only the Lord is going to help us. And I've said this before. Only the Lord is going to help us in these last days. We have to cry out to God Almighty. There's not going to be nobody else. I've told you, remember that video um, where President Trump told people, they can pray, shaming God in their own faith. That it's, it ain't going to be like that. I'm going to tell you right now. Because if you remember, Elijah and the, the, the false prophets prayed to their God, Baal. And Baal didn't do anything. But Elijah prayed to his God, and his God showed up. See, we cannot be seeking false gods. They're not going to show up. I'm going to tell you right now. If you remember, um, all the, the, the people, the pastors, they were with President Donald Trump in office. They were saying, oh, you're doing a good job, which he is. He's, he's doing a good business job. I think they just passed that tax cut. They just did um, last night. My husband knows more about it. But um, he's doing good when it comes to business issues. But when it comes to spiritual, we have to be wise like servants and innocent as doves. Okay? Now, they all were saying, oh, you're doing a good job. And But when it came to reading... That last scripture I just read to you, Second Chronicles 7.14, I couldn't believe this. The pastor left out the most important verse that says, turn from their wicked ways. You know, God can't heal America when there's sin in our nation. We have got to repent of that. We have to get on our knees and repent and seek the Lord. We have to look to Jesus. We can't pray to any other God. No other God's going to help us. You know, and so um, he, he read that scripture and it really bothered me because, you know, these are the people that are surrounding President Donald Trump. He needs people that are going to show him the right way, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible says wounds from a friend can be trusted. So, you know, I'm not being mean, I'm not speaking mean, but, you know, he needs people around him that are going to help him lead our nation in the right direction. Because if not, we're headed for a fall. I'm going to tell you right now. We're headed for a fall. Alright. I want to read this to you. You know, are you ready to humble yourself? You know, God is asking us, are we the church ready? Because we need to do that. Okay? We have to cry out to the Lord. He doesn't close his ears to the faint-hearted. Psalm 18, 6 says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry for help before him came to his ears. God hears you when you cry. He's not ignoring you just because he does not come quickly to your rescue. He's there in the midst of our circumstances. You and I need to put our total trust in him. Not anyone else. God is teaching you and me a lesson. He wants us to learn to trust Him and not ourselves. And that's what He's trying to do with all of us. You know, He doesn't want us to put our trust in ourselves. We have to learn to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean on into our own understanding. The flesh will fail you and I every time. You know, because we think we know more than God. We don't know more. God's ways are not our ways. Let me read you um this poem. On revival.
get ready for revival. I hear the Lord say, today is the day. That's right, we're getting ready to see a revival. It is closer now than before. I'm about to shut all doors. A new thing is coming, I hear the Lord say. That's right, a new thing is coming. Can't you feel it in the air? I know Daniel and I can. When you walk outside, you can just feel it in the air. America will never be the same. I'm about to do something that will cause all heaven and earth to loudly proclaim. Get ready, dear saint, I hear the Lord say. Revival is coming to America in a huge way. Man thinks they have it all figured out. That's right. Man thinks they know everything. They think because we haven't seen anything, that's not going to happen. Well, yes, it is. Well, that peace, peace, and sudden destruction. It is coming. Now, I'm not doom and gloom, preacher. No, I'm going to tell you what is coming. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? Others may tell you what your itchy ears want to hear. No, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. Be wise and make no doubt. Now America will be humbled. Get ready, dear saint, I hear the Lord say. God's power is being manifested to heal the sick and lame. Are you ready for what the Lord is about to do? You will not just talk about it. Revival will be tangible too. Amen. Get ready, dear saint, I hear the Lord say. Miracles will happen today. Psalm 77, 14. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. Amen. And I said, do you want God to use you in the greatest revival of history? God is calling all of us Christians, the Bible says. God is calling all of us. Okay, if you remember, I'm going to read you the scripture. You know, he's not calling some of us. Okay, it's not just for some of us. No, God is calling all of us. Matthew 9, 35, 38. This is the compassion of Jesus. Verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Verse 37, Then he said to his disciples, The, har the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Verse 38, Therefore pray the Lord the harvest to send out laborers into its harvest. Jesus needs you. He needs you and he needs me. Will you be his hands and feet? Think about it. Will you be his hands and feet? You ask, how do I become Jesus' hands and feet? I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And we've talked about it before. I know people don't want to hear it. Don't turn off this station. God's talking to you. There are those God is wanting to, to use, okay? Maybe even asking God, use me. I want to be used. But you know what? Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to do what Jesus is asking you and I to do? You know, everyone says, oh, they want the power. They want the glory. They want all that. But yet, they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to do what it takes to get there. Well, there's a price to pay. All right? Jesus said these words to his disciples. Take up your cross and follow me. I've said this before, and I read it over and over again. I didn't say it. Don't get mad at me. Jesus said we're to take up our cross and follow him. I'm going to read this to you. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. This is the English Standard Version. Then Jesus told his disciple, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. So you need to deny yourself and take up his cross and follow me. So you want, if you want to do what, 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 what the disciples did, you got to take up your cross. you got to follow Jesus. You can't have one foot in the gospel and one foot out. You can't love the world. Jesus is not in the world. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in love with the world, you need to let that go. If the world is everything, it's more important than Jesus. You need to let it go. Verse 25, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for, the, for my sake will find it. Verse 26, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? See, what's it going to profit by you gaining the whole world, it says? And forfeits his soul. Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Jesus is no longer here in the flesh. He needs you. There is a big revival of souls that is about to begin, and Christ needs you. He needs you. 
He needs you and I to cooperate. Are you willing to cooperate with His Spirit? All right? I'm going to tell you right now, God has been talking to people. All right? I already know that. God talks to you and I. We can't say God's not talking, okay? And we can say, oh, that's not God, and we brush it off. No, God is talking to us. We can't lie to the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now. You may be able to fool a man, but you're not fooling God. God knows everything because we're all going to stand before the Lord on Judgment Day. He's going to ask you, what did you do? Did you do what you wanted to do or did you obey the Lord? Who, who did you obey? I mean, when I get to heaven, I don't want God to say, what did you do? And then say, away from me, I never knew you. You know, it talks about, where is it? Um, let's see if I can find it. This just came to me. In Matthew, I've read it before. I told you, I don't know where everything is. God's going to take the weak things to confound the wise. Let me see if I can find it. Well, I may just be able to talk about it. He talks about many in the last days. They're going to come and say, I did this, Lord, I did that. Let me see if this is it. Well, here, a tree and its fruit. Matthew 7. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. See, there's a lot of people that say, oh, I'm a Christian, and they have put that label on their name, and that, but they have no fruit. I'm going to tell you right now, they have no fruit. And the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom and discernment to know if it's of Him or if it's not. By their fruit, you will recognize them, it says. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Verse 17. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone, see it says that, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who, who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. See, we've got to be doing God's will. It says it right here. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Well, you know what? That must be some Christians there. Because a non-Christian cannot cast out demons. Because if you remember in the Bible it says, what is that one where it says, he, he told, was it Paul the, or Peter? Paul? I can't remember which one. But um, the devil said, that's the disciple I know, but you I don't know. So it's got to be a Christian here. Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name, and your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doors. To me, that sounds like, could it be a Christian? I don't know. Maybe a so-called Christian, someone says they know Jesus, but really, truly don't know Jesus. You have to have a personal relationship. It's not enough just to know who Jesus is. It's not enough to say the sinner's prayer and then walk away and do your own thing. I'm going to tell you right now. It's not enough. When you give your heart and life to Christ, you've got to obey the Lord. You've got to turn from your wicked ways. You have to have a change of heart. You have to do what God is asking you to do. You can't say, oh, no, that's not God. I need to hear God. Oh, if God tells you to do something, you better do it. I'm going to tell you right now, we're all going to sing for the Lord. And we're going to answer for the things that we've done in this body. All right, let me get back to this. Jesus is no longer in the flesh. He needs you. There's a big revival of service about to begin, and Christ needs you. There is a cost for following Jesus. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing? You know, we don't talk about that. Yes, there is a cost. Are you willing to pay the price? Lay down your life to follow Christ. Are you going to come up with some excuse? Of why you can't serve the Lord and do His will. 
Which is it going to be? Are you going to take up your cross about Christ? Or are you going to make up an excuse? Say, oh, you can't do this. Oh, well, we're going to read you about this. It's in the Bible. Luke 9, 57 through 62. The cause of discipleship. Now it happened, verse 57. If you've got a Bible and you want to read this with me, you can. Luke 9, 57 through 62. Verse 57. Now it happened as a journey on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Verse 58, And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of there have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Verse 59, Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Verse 60, Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. See, everyone was making up excuses. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. She turned back wanting to stay. We cannot come up with excuses. We've got to do whatever Jesus is asking us to. You know if God is talking to you. I'm going to tell you right now. You know. You know in your heart. The Holy Spirit will show you. All right? You can't lie to the Lord. You can fool man. You can fool your husband. You can fool your wife. But you can't fool God. I'm going to tell you right now. You better obey God. Do you hear me? I'm talking to you. Pastors, you better obey God. You're responsible for that congregation. God is going to hold you accountable. What you're teaching, what you're standing up in that pulpit and what you're teaching, God's going to hold you accountable. All right? I'm, I'm just saying that. God's had me saying that to some people. What's it going to cost me? You are saying, that's no problem. I can do that. That's what you're saying. There are those saying, oh, that's no problem. All right? It will cost you everything. That's right. It's going to cost you everything. And I'm going to read you the scripture. Luke 14, 26 through 31. 33, I'm sorry. Luke 14, 26 to 33. Consider the cost. Now, I didn't write this. Don't get mad at me. I believe this is what Jesus said. So if you're going to get mad at someone, get mad at Jesus. Don't get mad at me. Luke 14, 26 to 33 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life, it says, also, he cannot be my disciple. See, if you're putting others before the Lord, you can't be God's disciple. Now, I'm not saying you're to forget your husband or wife and put your ministry first. No, that's not what I'm saying. But if you, you know, you love them more than you love God, God needs to be number one. I'm going to tell you right now, God needs to be number one in your life. Verse 27, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. You cannot be God's disciple if you do not bear your cross and come after him. Verse 24, 8 says, For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Verse 29, Lest after his late the foundation is not able to finish, all will see it begin to mock him saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. A white king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him comes against him with 20,000. Verse 32, Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation as conditions of peace. Verse 33, So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, see, Jesus said it, you cannot be my disciple. Let me read it again. Verse 33. Listen up. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, you go everyone, let it go. You cannot be my disciple. That's why I said it will cost you everything. Paying the price and laying down your own life is the hardest thing you will ever do. The disciples couldn't do it. Now I'm going to read you about that. 
it's the hardest thing you and I will ever do. Okay? Now, I just want to tell you, I remember one time talking with my girlfriend, and, and, and she said this to me. And she said this to me and Daniel. We were staying at her house, and she even said, I can't do what you guys are doing. That's what she said to me. And I can't do it, so I'm going to tell you right now. We can't do it. Do you hear what I'm saying? You can't do it. I can't do it. But Jesus can do it through you. You cannot do it on your own. All right? Only Jesus can do it through you. And I'm going to read you many of the, the many disciples that turned away. Okay? This is scripture. Now, I'm reading to you scripture. My people die for lack of knowledge. If you're reading God's word, then you will know what God's word is saying. You know, we don't read these scriptures in church. All right? It's important that we read sound doctrine so that we know what the Bible says. God didn't just put those scriptures there so that we can skip over them and say, oh, that's a nice scripture, and then go on our way. No! Those scriptures were put there for us to read them. No, yes, they make us uncomfortable, but you know what? They change us. We are changing from glory to glory. They convict our hearts so that we do what is right. But they're there for a reason to help us. I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't allow God to do what he wants to do with us and change us and mold us and make us into his image, we're going to have a hard time, saints. I'm going to let you know in the days ahead, they're going to be very, very, very hard. We have to be pliable. We have got to let God do the work in us that only he can do. You can't do it. I can't do it. But Jesus can do it. As we submit to God and allow him to do it, He'll do it. Father, I ask you to change us. I ask you to make us pliable, moldable. Make us into your image, Lord, so that we reflect you, Jesus, so that when others look at us, they're going to see you, Lord. They're going to sense your presence, Lord. It's not about us. It's about you, Jesus. We can't truly minister and be a, walk, be a walking miracle for you unless you change us. We have nothing to say to people, Lord. You know, we're testimonies. We are a testimony. You and I are a testimony. I'm going to just say this right now. You don't need to go and sit in Bible school and have a bunch of head knowledge. I'm going to tell you right now. You, Jesus' disciples, they walked with Jesus. They were living epistles. We're to be living testimony. Others are to see Christ in our lives, okay? When you see me talking on here, I'm talking about real things. When you see me crying, I'm not just coming up with a story. I'm telling you, we're living it, all right? I am real. I'm not phony. I don't get on here and lie to you. I tell you the truth. All right? Let me read you the scripture. John 6, 60 through 71. Many disciples turn away. Verse 60. Therefore, many of the disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard thing. Who can understand it? Verse 61. When Jesus knew himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? Verse 62, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? 63, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Verse 64, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. Verse 65, and let me just stop. There's going to be a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to portray the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now. There's going to be a great falling away. I really believe that. And then we're going to see the man of perdition. There's going to be a great falling away of the church. Don't let that be said of you. I'm going to tell you right now. We need to keep our eyes set on Jesus. Verse 65. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Verse 66, from that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? Verse 68, but Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Verse 69, see, they asked the Lord, where else can we go? There is nowhere else. You're either going to go to heaven or hell. There's no in between. Do you hear what I'm saying, saints? You cannot choose where you're going to go. You're either going to follow the Lord or you're not going to follow the Lord. It's that simple. Don't turn this off and say, well, hey, I, 
she don't know what she's talking about. Oh, yes, I do. There are only two places you're going to go. You're going to either go to heaven or hell. There is no other place. I'm not going to tell you what your itchy ears want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? He asked the Lord this. His disciples said, Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Verse 69, also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 70, Jesus answered them, did I not choose you? See, God chose them. And there are those I'm talking to that God has chosen you. He has chosen you. He's got something for you. But he's waiting on you. I'm just going to say that. God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to say, okay, Lord, I want you to have your way in me. I want you to change me. I'm willing, Lord. To take up my cross and follow you. God's chosen you. There are those I'm talking to. If that is you, you just need to go to God and say, God, I choose to follow you. I choose to pay the price. I choose to do whatever it is you're asking me to do this day. Help me, Lord, because I can't do it on my own, Lord. I need you to help me to step forward and take up my cross and follow you today in Jesus' name. Just pray that. There are those I'm talking to. Keep dropping papers. There are those the Holy Spirit is talking to that God has chosen you. And you know that God has chosen you to do a big work. But I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to take up your cross. That's the only way. You've got to take up your cross. And I just read it to you. All right? And I read you what Jesus said in verse 7. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you? There are 12. One of you is a devil. See, there's going to be some devils amongst us, but there's going to be those that God has chosen. Don't let those devils stop you. You do what God has called you to do. I don't care if anyone else is doing it. You do what God has asked you to do. I don't care if another pastor is doing it. We're not interested in pleasing man. We're interested in pleasing God. Do you hear me? Do you want the power? I want the power I don't have, but it's coming. We've got to be willing to pay the price. Would everyone willing to say, yes, Lord, I want it. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? You've got to be on fire. You've got to say, yes, Lord, and you've got to run after it. It ain't going to come knocking on your door. I'm going to tell you right now. If you want the power of God, you've got to run after it. You've got to go to God. It's got to burn in your heart. You've got to go after it. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to tell you what Daniel and I have gone through. It's not beneath. We don't have that power of God, but it's coming, saints. Do you hear me? It's coming. We paid the price. And you've got to be willing to pay the price. Take up your cross and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Praise the Lord. All right. I lost my place. Um. I said this, if you want God's power and presence, you have to be willing to pay a price and lose everything. That's right, we got to lose everything. I know we don't want to hear it. There are people that don't want to hear this type of message. And this basically is everything the Holy Spirit is speaking through to me as I wrote it down here. I want to be led by the Spirit. That's what it's about. It's about being led by the Spirit of the Lord. Jesus died for you to save you and give you eternal life. Don't you owe him your life? Don't you owe him your life? He died for you. Do you hear me? He paid the price, the ultimate price. He died for us. He shed his blood, died on a cross, and paid the penalty of our sinfulness. Jesus did that. You and me should have died, but Jesus paid the ultimate price for you and me. We should have died, but Jesus did it. He stood in our place. He paid the ultimate price for you and me through his death on the cross. Now you and me can live in heaven forevermore. That's right, because what Jesus did. We can live with Jesus forevermore. All right? And I said maybe you're not saved and you don't know Jesus. Today is your day. You know, we prayed that already. You know, I want to be led by the Lord. If you don't know Jesus, call on him today. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's all you got to do. You got to mean it, though. Call on Jesus. That's your first thing. You need to call on Jesus, be saved. And then say, Jesus, use me. 
an anthology. Walk with them daily. I want to read you the scripture where Jesus dies on the cross. Matthew 27, 45 through 54. Jesus dies on the cross. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Verse 47, some of those who stood there when they heard that said, This man is calling for Elijah. Verse 48, immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to drink, him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Verse 15, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. Verse 51, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. Verse 52, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints but fallen asleep were raised. Verse 53, And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to men. Verse 54, So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Salvation is a free gift. I'm going to read you this poem. Salvation is a free gift. My God, my God, where are you in all this mess? Why have you forsaken me? I boldly confess. Luke 22, 42, 43. Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. The Lord was forsaken on the cross. He died for all the lost. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Salvation is a free gift given to everyone. How can I know the pain others feel? Their trials are very real. Unless a person suffers and dies, they don't know what others are going through. What makes them cry? Jesus was, Jesus was a man like all of us. He never spoke back to th or threw a fit. Wait, Jesus was a man like all of us. He never spoke back or threw a fuss. Father, help your children, I pray. Take up our cross and follow you each day. Em empathize with others that hurt. May we teach them the way. Show them your mercy and grace today. Hebrews 4.15 For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin. Let your life be a testament to them that need to hear. Follow Christ with all your heart. Never fear. As you walk the walk, not just talk the talk, what you say cannot be erased with chalk. Our Lord had scars and so will you. Your light will shine to them too. Those scars will be your testimony to people that are broken. It will be Jesus' glory, not even spoken. His presence will ooze to all. When you're in a room, they will humbly fall, praise the Lord. In your presence we will sing, All glory goes to Jesus, our soon coming King. Amen. All glory goes to Jesus, our soon coming King. Ephesians 2 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not in yourself. It is the gift of God. Amen. Now, like I said, we're, we're headed for a revival. Here in America, we are about to see a revival, saying, we have to keep going. I believe we're almost there. I really, truly believe that. Let's pray um, for all of us. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our president. You know, and what's going on right now? Because, you know, I believe we're about to see something. We're about to see a war. Um, I believe we're about to see an earthquake over there in California. I believe we're going to see a lot of different disasters. Especially in 2018. Remember I told you there's an asteroid that's coming near to Earth December 16. NASA is saying that. So are we going to see something with that? You know, I, um, I told you. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. I've got my notes all messed up here. Um, that prophecy um, that, that, that um, gentleman from India... He was talking about 
um, a meteorite. I don't have it on hand. You'll have to look at it on our YouTube page. Let's pray real quick. Father, we just come together in agreement, Lord. I pray for all our viewers here on YouTube and Facebook, Lord. Father, I ask, Lord, uh, that you would just touch our hearts today, Lord. Father, our huge revival is getting ready to take place, Lord. Father, if you're speaking to some of them, Lord, about taking up their cross and following you, because, Lord, you, you need all of us, Lord, in these last days to cooperate, to do what you want to do in us, Lord, so that you can use us, Lord, to do great and mighty miracles, Lord. You're not just calling a few of us, Lord. You're calling all of us, Lord, to take up our cross and follow you, Lord. I pray, oh God, that this message, Lord, would speak to the hearts of your people, Lord, that they would say, yes, Lord, I want, I want that. I want to do whatever it is you're asking me to do. I'm willing to take on my cross and follow you. Touch them today, Lord. Touch those that need to be touched. Touch those, Lord, that have maybe drifted back, prodigal sons or daughters. Touch those that don't even know you, Lord. I mean, they're calling you today and be saved, Lord. Father, we pray for that. We pray for our edge of protection over America over our whole nation, Lord, and everything that's going on with these other countries, Lord. We pray for President Donald Trump. We pray for wisdom and direction for the White House and the Trump administration, Lord. We pray that he would be humble before you to be a strong leader in America, Lord, in this, this hour that we're living in. We're faced with so many things that are coming up against us, Lord. I pray, oh God, that we would turn our hearts back to you. We would repent of our sin, that you would heal our nation, Lord. I pray for a healing amongst America. Lord, I pray for those that don't even know you today, that they'll call upon your name and be saved, oh God. This is the day, Lord. These are the last days, Lord. We know you're coming soon. Now, we don't know when. One day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day, but Lord, we want to be ready, Lord. We're looking to you, Lord. We're not getting our eyes and our fix on this world and what this world has to offer because Lord this world has nothing to offer it has nothing Lord this world is passing away Lord we get our eyes on you Lord Jesus may we do your will Lord we know Father you have a will and a purpose and a plan for each of us Lord may we follow that will Lord we pray for your anointing and your power and your presence Lord to be upon us and in your church Lord you said the later house shall be greater oh God make that later house greater Lord wake up your lukewarm churches Lord there are churches that are lukewarm wake them up shake them up whatever it takes Lord we pray your will to be done Lord I pray for all those that are on here today I ask you to bless them Lord bless them mightily Lord Father I pray for healing Lord in their body there are those that may need healing Lord I ask you to heal their bodies Lord we pray for healing in Jesus' name from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever your situation is. Maybe if they're needing work, Lord, they're out of job. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would send finances, financial miracles, Lord. Whatever their situation is, Lord. Maybe they have a loved one that needs salvation. We pray for salvation of souls to be saved. Maybe they had a problem in their marriage right now. I pray for marriages to be healed. Lord, you know the situation. Whatever it is, Lord, I ask that you'd answer prayer for your people today. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask you to go before us, protect us to the right, to the left, Lord. And bless the rest of this weekend and keep us safe. Keep us in the palm of your hands, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. All right, I want you to know we love you. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your support. Remember, if you want to get that book, let me know. All the information is going to be posted on the video here. You can contact our ministry. You can send us a letter, a prayer, or a word of encouragement. All right? Keep going. Keep seeking the Lord one day at a time. We're moving closer, saying, you know, I told you, God wants to keep us encouraged. You know, what it talks about that. I would have fainted. I would have given up had God not encouraged us. So, you know, it may not happen right this minute, but it's coming. There's going to be a lot of people that doubt God and they're going to say, oh, you're false. No, and then boom, it's going to happen. So we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. All right, I want you to know we love you. We appreciate you. Until we meet again, this is Prophetess Dawn O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heart Ball Corner. God bless you. Have a safe and blessed Saturday. Talk to you soon.